So, so let me show you something here. If you hear a buzzing sound, I'm at work. But instead of giving a rap song on YouTube, you start putting out some knowledge that I know. Let me know if you think that I'm wrong. So, a lot of things happening right now. A lot of things. Uh, we have environment, earthquakes, hurricanes. Well, the reason why I believe that this is happening, but the main event would be, I would think, when the world blitz, right? I mean, you would think that that's, that's like a big earthquake, oh yeah, but if the world flips, it would then, then, then we're really in some shit. So, this guy right here speaks about rotation, like the world, the world rotates. So, let's get into that. How we use induction forces in a different way. This time, we have a whole row of coils, sunk in slots in a steel base, and they've been arranged in such a way as to propel this sheet of aluminium horizontally. Lay it on the surface, and switch on, once again, this time without... Bad. It's this. I shall need, in fact, a little weight to hold it down. Of course, in any other position, it's all right. It's only when the offset mass comes out there that it weighs over like that. Pushing on there, just like our volunteers. And you see, the weight comes up. So that gravity, and not I, shall put on the torque. And there you see a precession. Not the sort of movement you really expected, because you are accustomed in higher mathematics to a torque producing an acceleration. Here, a torque produces purely a rotation. And if I put three times the mass on, I get three times the angular velocity. Rotation, like the world rotates. A different sort of device from our common experience. Now, what I want you to notice this time is, I'll spin it up again because it's spinning a little slow. I want you to notice how it accelerates when I put the weight on and how it decelerates. Especially how it decelerates. And it's just say we're the weight. I'm convinced that a torque produces a velocity and not an acceleration. It must have an acceleration or it couldn't increase its velocity at all. And it must have a deceleration when it stops. So let us see if you can determine the rate of deceleration from that sort of angular velocity. When it comes around, I'm going to catch the weight and watch it stop. Hop. Ready again? Hop. There is an acceleration, but it is of a simply enormous value. Spin, then rotate. Let us try increasing the torque by increasing the radius at which things happen. I put this long arm on, and of course it will precess anyway now because of the uh, out of balance mass there. But I can now hang a weight on there, and the precession rate increases because the radius is increased. And if I hang it on further along, I get a still bigger precession rate. If I hang it right at the end, you'll see it do something else besides merely go around at constant speed. I think I need a fresh spin. Hang on. So, we're spinning and rotating on an axis. All this shaft has a peg in it. When you buy a toy gyroscope, it has a hole in it. The first thing to do when you've bought a toy gyro is to fill the hole in with a peg that sticks out. Because you break the string in the hole and you never do from a peg. Right. 
I'm going to reinsert the torque arm. On the axe, it's like the way we are. Yep. Which will be north and south. When it comes round, I'm going to hang this weight on and I'm going to let it drop rather fiercely. You see it going up and down as it goes around? That process is called nutation. It is the result of an, an acceleration as well as a pure precession. Now, the two worlds. The fact that I can press on that and produce a precession of that either way has got nothing to do with the fact that I can press on that and produce a precession that way. Because I can hang a weight on this side and at the same time I can then attempt to make it go faster than it was going before by pushing on there, just like our volunteer was. And you see, the weight comes up or down. Now we've got something new, because a weight rising means an increase in potential energy. Where did the energy come from? The answer was it came from my finger, because now my finger was moving as it pushed. When I pushed on it and it was stationary, it didn't yield at all, so there was no power input. And even though there's movement of the inner ring, there is no power output because that moves without being capable of producing any torque. If I resist that motion, then of course it immediately gives way to me. So these are the two worlds separated for you as they never are in electromagnetism. We have again been able to make the invisible visible to dare to make the intangible tangible. Electromagnetism. Let me tell you something. You are literally electrically magnetic when it comes to this work. The environment, the reason why we have lightning, the reason why you can rub your feet and create the electrical shock, and the reason why we are standing straight up and down because we have a polarity. All that together, it can produce an electromagnetic field that we already have existing in our world. So what he's saying pretty much is also in the fundamentals of our world that we're in. Like he is pretty much explaining how it works in a smaller scale. Back in 1972, by the way, to kids, they don't teach that. Now, scientific gyros are beautiful things like this in gym rings that maintain their axis of